Good evening to everyone. My name is TC. This is my fifth session, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, thank you for joining us today. And today I would like to talk about artificial, uh, artificial sweeteners. Uh, unlike artificial intelligence, AI, artificial sweeteners have been existed for many years. So for example, if we look at aspartame, which is the main topic for today, um, it was approved by the US FDA in 1974, which is almost 50 years ago. And uh, recently, artificial sweeteners have been a hot topic ever since May 2023, when WHO made some announcements regarding non-sugar sweeteners and as well as aspartame. Uh, before we move further, um, for today, we are talking about artificial sweetener, but um, as I mentioned just now, um, WHO made an announcement regarding to non-sugar sweetener. So what is non-sugar sweetener? Uh, in short, uh, non-sugar sweeteners is also known as NSS, and it's referring to sweeteners other than sugar. So sugar over here is, ref is uh, are referring to glucose, fructose, sucrose, and all those OSE. Uh, so hence, uh, NSS, the non-sugar sweetener, is more than just artificial sweetener. It includes sugar substitutes like sugar alcohols and even natural sweeteners or natural substitutes like stevia, agave, and also monfruit sweetener. So uh, if we look at the word artificial, it means something made uh, or produced by human rather than uh, something that occur naturally. So artificial sweeteners are basically synthetic or man-made substances used as a substitute for sugar. And uh, the reason why we add this is, of course, to increase the sweetness of our food and also beverages. And usually, artificial, artificial sweeteners are either low or zero calorie. Uh, they are made sweeter than sugar, so you only need a small amount to achieve the same level of sweetness. This makes them very popular among people or consumers who want to reduce sugar intake or manage weight, uh, or their body weight. And for manufacturers, they also like to use artificial sweetener um, basically because of two things. One, marketing. And number two, to reduce cost because you just need to use small amount and you can achieve the same sweetness level as using uh, typical sugar. So some might ask, sweeter, how many times sweeter? Is it two times? Is it 10 times or what? So if we look at this table, again, okay, it shows the sweetness level of some common sweeteners. Sucrose, or what we call a stable sugar, is used as the reference. So it has a value of one. And anything sweeter than sugar will have a value bigger than one. So as you can see here, aspartame is about 200 times sweeter than sucrose. And uh, we have one more recent artificial sweetener known as uh, avatine. And this is 20,000 times sweeter than sucrose. So uh, all these are... Um, is, uh, all, all these are examples to show you how sweet is artificial sweetener. So it's not like two or three times more, but in terms of hundreds to thousands or to ten thousands. So uh, some individual will use this non-sugar sweetener or artificial sweetener as substitutes for sugar in their meal. So they add it to their coffee as an option or as an alternative to sugar. Uh, the reason why they do this mainly because of health. But do you know there are food products in the market that are added with artificial sweetener? And um, there are two ways for us to tell if the food products have been added with artificial sweetener. The very first way or the first way is we look at the product description. So whenever you see the word like diet, sugar-free, light calorie, reduce calorie, all these words or terms can be used as an indicator of the presence of artificial sweetener. 
So this is the first way. Look at the product description. Uh, this way is easy, but then it's not 100% accurate. Uh, the best way to tell is by reading the ingredient list. Uh, since artificial, artificial, artificial sweetener are classified as food ingredient in Malaysia, so manufacturers must declare the presence of artificial sweetener in the ingredient list. So there's no way to run away from, from this. So if you read the artif uh, ingredient list, you should be able to see the name of the artificial sweetener or any non-sugar sweetener. So if you look at this, the, the example that I show over here, you can see aspartame is there, uh, isofame potassium is there. Um, there's another one, popular one would be like saccharin. It's also a uh, um, non-sugar sweetener. Uh, in some countries, uh, aspartame is known as additives. So um, in some countries, they don't declare the name, but they declare the, uh, the E number or the INS number. So always remember 951. This is the number for aspartame. So it can either appear as E951, which is product from EU countries. They will use E number, E951. Or in countries whereby they use, uh, they follow codex. So it will be labeled as INS951. So the number, they are the same, just that the prefix will be different. E for EU countries or Europe, INS are for the rest of the country. So uh, uh, in Malaysia, uh, soon we are going to follow uh, this INS numbering for additives. So uh, at the moment, um, aspartame or artificial sweetener are still considered as food ingredients. But later on, there might be a change in this aspect. So this later means maybe in coming uh, January 2024. Okay, so if you look at the, in our regulation in Malaysia, permitted artificial sweeteners include the following, saccharines, acesulfame potassium, neotame, and also aspartame. These four are listed in our regulation and manufacturer can use this um, in their uh, food formulation. And um, according to Food Regulation 195, when artificial sweeteners is added to food, a warning statement, which is unsuitable for phenylketonurics, must be included in the label. So uh, why this is critical? Because this type of artificial, artificial sweetener usually contains phenylalanine. This is a type of amino acid. And uh, those who are suffering from phenylketonuria, you, you, uh, phenyl, phenyl, phenylketonuria, they cannot digest this phenylalanine, this amino acid. So it will accumulate in the body, and that is when you have side effect of aspartame. Like when Mark mentioned this now, headache, nausea, vomit, and so on. So uh, most of us, okay, for typical consumer, uh, we, are, we, we do have the enzyme to convert this phenylalanine to other compounds. But for those who are suffering from uh, phenylketonuria, they do not have this enzyme in their body, so they have some issue uh, when they consume product with phenylalanine. And artificial sweetener uh, are known to contain phenylalanine. So aside from artificial sweetener, other non-sugar sweeteners such as sugar alcohol and even stevia are also permitted in food regulation. Um, but since artificial sweeteners are used in food, so why is everyone talking about that, especially aspartame? So uh, this is because uh, two months ago in mid of uh, May, 15 May, 2023, WHO released a new guideline on non-sugar sweeteners, which recommend against using non-sugar sweetener to control weight or reduce the risk of NCD, which is non-communicable diseases. So um, in their finding, okay, NSS does not provide long-term benefit in reducing body fat in adults and also in children. And to make it worse in their finding, it also shows that NSS may have undesirable effects 
such as increase in type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and even mortality. So everything sounds scary and alarming. But if we really look into the article or the document provided by WHO, there are actually two pieces of information in the guideline that most of us are not aware of. The first one is this guideline is for everyone except individual with pre-existing diabetes. So the guideline showing saying that uh, we should we try to avoid using uh, NSS is basically for everyone, but for those with diabetes. And the second thing is that it's not only for aspartate. It's not only for artificial sweetener. This guideline covers all synthetic and natural occurring or modified non-nutritive sweetener. So it includes basically anything aside from sugar. So that's why the name, the term that they use is non-sugar sweetener. So it is clear that WHO is not banning NSS. Okay, it's not banning NSS, it's not banning artificial sweetener. It's just that they are providing a guideline to suggest to consumer or maybe to the policymaker on uh, trying to avoid using NSS if you want to reduce weight or you want to control your uh, body weight. Okay. Uh, they basically, they suggest we should not over rely on NSS as a miracle solution to control our weight or even to reduce the risk of NCD. And uh, after this article, uh, recently, a few days ago, on July 14, WHO announced, made another announcement. <laughs> basically, they announced that aspartame is a possible carcinogen. And basically, this fuels the topic of artificial, artificial from hot to boiling. So everyone is talking about this. You go to social media, you see tons of videos, tons of, of articles talking about the harm of aspartame. So um, anyway, if, if we really read the news released by WHO, you can find this following information. Aspartame, yes, is classified as possible carcinogen to human. But also, uh, like Mark mentioned just now, the evidence on aspartame as carcinogen is still limited. More studies are required to understand the connection between uh, aspartame and cancer. And um, WHO also emphasized that the acceptable daily intake is 40 milligram per kilogram body weight. So if you follow this limit, basically it's still safe for you. So if you look at this information, it's actually not so scary. Lah. And to put things into perspective, okay, we can use diet soda as an example. A typical range of aspartame in a can of soda is basically about 150 to 220 milligrams. So to make our calculation easy, let's take 200 milligrams. So in every one can, we expect to find 200 milligrams of aspartame. And if our body weight is 70 kilograms, which is typical, for, for my case, it's more than 70. Uh, if we take 70 as an example, as an average, the accepted, acceptable daily intake is 2,800 milligrams. So basically, you need to drink 14 cans in order to achieve this, to, to exceed this limit. And uh, I believe we don't really do that. If you really do that, then you have more problem to, to worry rather than this aspartame. <laughs> okay. So drinking diet soda occasionally is not going to give, do any harm. Okay. Taking aspartame occasionally is not going to do any harm to you. Okay. It will only be an issue if you start replacing all your sugars with aspartame. Okay, in every single meal, in every single food, in every single drink that you consume, that you make, that you produce, or that you prepare, you add aspartame. And then you need to track and record the amount that you actually consume. And hopefully, it's less than the acceptable daily intake. So you have to calculate. Based on your body weight, you multiply by 40 milligrams. So like I say, if your body weight is 70 kilogram, your maximum intake for one day is 2,800 milligram. Okay. So, um, but some of you say, hey, 
but it's still classified as group 2B. It's still classified as possible carcinogenic to humans. So uh, in my next slide, okay, it's either going to make you more worried or it's going to make you feel better. So I certainly hope it's the later one. Lah. Okay, you feel better after you see the next slide. Okay, so I have warned you. So <laughs> if you're not ready to see the next slide, you can actually uh, uh, exit from this from this live live session. Okay, uh, but if you're okay, then we're going to proceed. Okay, Mark, can we proceed? <laughs> can I? I've not seen, so please proceed. But okay. for those, uh, is it something that is very gory or? No la, no la, no la. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at this, okay, the carcinogen classification used by WHO is actually by the International Agency for Research and Cancer. So it's IARC. Okay, IARC stands for International Agency for Research on Cancer. Uh, this. This agency basically reviews data on situation in which people are exposed to the agent as well as scientific evidence. So this scientific evidence could be from human study, could be from animal study and so on. And there are four different groups, group one, 2A, 2B, and also group three. So group one is carcinogen to humans. Basically the connection is very clear, okay? Uh, group two is limited. Okay, they are not sure, not sufficient evidence, not convincing evidence. So they have two different group. Okay, two A and two B. So basically, two A there there are more evidence, but still not convincing. Group two B will be less than two A, still not convincing. And then for group three is basically classified as uh, non uh, carcinogenic to humans. Okay. So uh, we have to take, we have to remember one thing. Okay, this classification is based on evidence. Okay, it's based on evidence whether that agent is capable of causing cancer. So it's based on risk. Okay, and it does not measure the likelihood that cancer will occur. That is the risk. So it's not going to tell you whether uh, what is the risk of getting cancer from this agent. What is the dosage? of you getting cancer from this agent. So it's basically telling that, okay, this one can cause cancer or maybe can cause cancer. They're not telling you what is the dosage, what is the rate, what is the risk. Do you need to consume for 10 years before you get cancer? Or do you get cancer right immediately after you consume that agent or exposed to that agent? So uh, if we look, okay, um, I have some examples for you, okay. So if you look over here uh, for alcoholic beverages and processed meat, they are actually classified as group one. They are carcinogenic to humans. And yet we do see this product in the market. So if these products are not going to be banned, I don't think why aspartame is going to be banned. So most likely aspartame, at least at this moment, will not be banned from the market. Okay, just that you have to be very careful with the dosage that you consume. As long as you are in the range of 40 milligram per kilogram of your body weight, then you should be uh, safe from any harm. Unless, again, you have issue with phenylalanine. So if you do consume and then you feel not well, you feel nausea, you feel sick, then better don't consume. Aspartame. But if you consume, then you don't have any side effect, then basically you're, you're good to go. Lah. Okay. And uh, aside from this, you can see that in uh, like group 2A, red meat and hot beverages. Okay. So if you drink hot beverages, your risk is, I mean, the, the, the so, so called, it, it is at a higher level as compared to aspartame. Okay, and this hot beverages is not like 100 degrees Celsius. It's only 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, so there are evidence associating drinking hot beverages above 60 degrees Celsius with cancer. And there are more of this evidence as compared to aspartame with cancer. Okay, so next time when you drink your coffee or tea, maybe you need to 
take note on this one. Okay, do you really want to drink your coffee or your tea while it's still hot? Okay, and um, if, if you look at group 2B, okay, uh, aspartame is there, okay, newly inducted to this group. But there are other types of uh, food that you can find, okay, like pickled vegetable is one of the, is another uh, agent classified under 2B. Okay, so um, both that, that, that is, uh, both are hazardous, okay, but what, what is the dosage? For pickle, I have no idea. But at least for aspartame, okay, we can follow the recommendation, the recommended acceptable daily intake, which is 40 milligram per kilogram body weight. So if you follow this uh, intake limit, you should be safe. Okay, so um, I hope this slide will help you to understand more about the classification. So don't get so worried about the group 2B. Don't worry about aspartame being possibly carcinogenic to human, okay? Uh, because there are many other food that we consume which, which is either in the same group or even higher group, okay? And please do not get, uh, do not misinterpret, I am not advocating for everyone to take aspartame, okay? I'm just trying to make you more informed about aspartame. And do not treat aspartame or food containing aspartame as something like a radioactive radioactive substance. Okay, it's not like you consume today, you're gonna to get cancer next day, the, the next day. Okay, so there are more research that are needed in order to, uh, to, to identify or to have a better understanding on aspartame and its carcinogenicity. So um, this is my last, last slide. Okay, these are the thing that I hope all of you can take away from today's session. So non-sugar sweeteners are not miracle alternative for everyone. Okay, if you are a diabetes patient, then maybe yes. Okay, get, taking non-sugar sweeteners could be a better choice. Uh, if you want to reduce weight, reduce sugar, but not by using substitute sugar. Okay, do not substitute sugar and try to uh, achieve uh, lower body weight or manage your body weight. Okay, control your intake. Okay, so you need to know the acceptable daily intake, the 40 milligram per kilogram body weight that is only for aspartame. So if you are taking uh, asulfame potassium, it has its own acceptable daily intake. You can actually find this from the internet. W, I think WHO or some agency, they do um, provide this uh, daily intake. So you can refer to the daily intake. I think FDA also pro uh, as, uh, provide daily intake and different country might have different uh, value. Okay, so you just choose whichever you think is more trustworthy. Okay, and um, one thing that uh, maybe um, it would be good if this is true is that manufacturers should actually declare what is the amount. Okay, we have the daily intake by just knowing the presence of aspartame or all those artificial sweetener in the product is not sufficient. Because usually at the moment, there's no regulation and forcing them to declare what is the amount. So if WHO is raising this concern, they are also mentioned about the daily acceptable intake. So I think uh, policymakers should look into this, okay, how to enforce or how to provide more information to equip the consumer on the amount of aspartame that they are taking from product that contains aspartame. Because usually manufacturer is not going to declare on the formulation, but at least they have to declare on the amount of aspartame so that consumers are well informed, they can do the recording, they can track the amount that they consume in the day, and this can actually help them to avoid exceeding the acceptable daily intake, okay? But at the moment, there's no such enforcement, but hopefully we can see this uh, after the announcement by WHO. It, it might take a few years. It, it might not be so recent or so, so fast. It might take a few years to get this enforced, but hopefully we will get to see this uh, in, in coming years. So stay calm, do enjoy your diet soda or maybe any of those uh, low calorie or zero calorie food, okay? 
try to try to try to be less stressful about aspartame because stress is also known to cause cancer. <laughs> okay, so I think that's all for me. Thank you very much. Okay, if you have any question, please do ask. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tan. Thank you so much uh, for clearing out um, the concerns. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, of course, I would personally not recommend anyone to take, um, you know, uh, carbonated drinks, uh, processed foods and things like that. Uh, but, uh, okay, so um, we do have a question right now, which is from me. How is aloe vera carcinogenic? How? Uh, this one, I have no idea. It could be some of the compound in aloe vera that causes this uh, issue. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, I guess I guess uh, just now um, you know you did mention about the phenylketonuria, uh, right? Um, yeah. So phenylketonuria. Yeah, nuria. So um, <clears throat> I just want to, to 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 let the audience know that you know um, this particular uh, disease or problem is actually a rare genetic disorder um, that affects the body's uh, ability to break down uh, uh, phenylalanine. Phenylalanine. Yes, and um, uh, so an amino acid like, found in uh, many foods. Uh. So uh, people with uh, you know. Uh, this uh, disorder cannot break down uh, phenylalanine uh, properly, which causes uh, phenylalanine to build up in the body. So yeah. it accumulates in the body. Um, this can lead to a variety of health problems like what you just said, like mental retardation, seizures, uh, and learning disabilities. I have to go and check out whether maybe I have also. Anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so... so um, I, I I have concerns about about all these um, chemical uh, products uh, that are in 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 our our, our food and all that. Um, my my main question is actually like um, does aspartame uh, bioaccumulate in the body? It shouldn't. Uh, it shouldn't accumulate in the body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless you consume. Uh, usually what we what we worry will be on the dosage if you are if you are not consuming above the uh, the dosage then you should be safe because before they they um before like for example like EU or FDA before they allow this the, the use of this artificial sweetener studies has been conducted and they 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 will do animal study or maybe even human study to show that it's safe to be consumed. They have the dosage. What is the safe level of dosage? And if you don't exceed that dosage, it shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Mm, okay. I understand. Um, well, at the moment, there is uh, no questions yet so um i'll open to uh, dr lim um and tiffany do you all have any questions not not at the moment but uh i just want to share that i'm not sure is it because of uh some psychology issue but whenever i drink diet drinks like diet soda i'll get headache <laughs> i do not know whether it's psychology issue so that's why I will uh, refrain from drinking it. Uh, mm -hmm. Because maybe I'm more sensitive. <laughs> yeah. So maybe Mark can help you have to add some aspartame to your cup of coffee without you knowing it and then see after you consume, is there any effect? If there's an yeah. effect, maybe yes. <laughs> no, yeah, no. I have to do this yeah, We have to do some blind test. Yes, blind test. <laughs> Okay, um, we have um, KCO's uh, question uh, that, uh, no, I mean, sorry, uh, KCO um, asked us a question, which sweetener is more harmful to health in the long term? How is the sweetness of artificial sweeteners bumped up? Meaning to say that how did they uh, manage to increase the, the, the sweetness of the product 
by 20,000 times of our normal table sugar. Um, what is the process used to achieve this? Um, the legendary uh, Warren Buffett uh, is known for his fondness for drinking Coke in various variants and every day, but has not shown any ill effects for his age. I guess this applies to uh, Donald Trump as well. So why are they still not dead? <laughs> in other words, I guess that's what our, uh, what KCEO is trying to ask. Uh, I have no answer for that. Okay, maybe they are more healthy as compared to us. Maybe we'll just see that, oh, they do drink this, but on the other end, we have no idea how's their lifestyle. Maybe they are living a stress-free lifestyle, so they are more healthy in that way. But uh, back to the question whereby uh, how come this type of aspartame or any artificial sweetener has so, so much higher uh, sweetness level? Um, I don't have an answer for that, but I think it's, it's basically due to how this compound binds to the receptor in our body. So uh, it can it, it might because because of this type of uh, compound it triggers our 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 sensory to to think that okay this is how many times sweeter uh two hundred times sweeter three hundred times sweeter and so on so it's not it's it's more on the chemical part it's not because of they 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 are more compound in the in 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 the product but. It's because of the, I think it's more on the chemistry. Right? Okay, I, I, I really don't have an answer, but I, I do believe it's basically uh, depends on how the compound interact with our human receptor. Okay. Um, Another question, I think that there's one earlier question is on what? Which, uh, uh, which one is safer? Yes. Or which is most harmful? So I think I think what I can uh, I can also answer that that part is um, all artificial sweeteners comes with a uh, uh, how should I say a user uh, acceptable uh, daily intake yeah, yeah a guide um, you know what's the acceptable level you know and then uh, uh, people should consume it in um, moderation. Um, it, it is it is found in WHO, it's found in uh, FDA. Um, you know, if you consume too much of it, there are many things that that that, that could happen. Um, so like uh, saccharin, take for example, <clears throat> you know, um, it's been around for since uh, for 120 years. In, um, and 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 you know, if you over uh, take it. You might cause uh cancer, bladder, bladder cancer. So that 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 is the limited uh, knowledge uh, that we have at the moment. Um, but um, you know, for me, like I said earlier, let's uh, try to avoid uh, all these you know processed foods. Uh, try to go as natural as possible. Um, I hope uh, that answers your question, uh, Casey. Yeah, if if I may add lah. Uh... All permitted artificial sweetener are safe. Okay, it depends on the amount. If you exceed the amount, even though you are taking sugar, even though you are taking salt, even though you are drinking water, you exceed that amount, it's no longer safe. The dosage is the critical part. Right. So, uh, I, I guess, I guess. Um... Other other questions would, would would be like you know uh artificial uh, sweeteners good or oh no not not say good uh, safe for pregnant uh, women take for example oh uh as long as you're not exceeding the limit it's not it's not an issue even for pregnant women unless you are suffering from phenylketonuria uh, then you should avoid other than that you just have to make sure that you are not exceeding the uh, permitted limit. But let's assume you don't have phenylketal urine. But yeah. if you consume it, you feel you, you don't feel well after you consume diet soda or after you consume aspartame, then you should avoid. Yep. Okay. It's it's just like you know, some people um, say that you know when they take MSG, they have headaches uh, and, and, and things like that. But you know, um, in Penang, um, 
it's hard to find food without MSG if we are eating out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I guess, you know, it's, it's uh, like for Tiffany's case, do not know whether it's psychological or, um, you know, really she, she, she is allergic to aspartame or any of the artificial sweeteners. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Like for MSG, I, I tend to have some uh, allergic reaction uh, when I have MSG. I will sweat more and then I will feel, uh, I will have headache sometimes, like tension headache like this. And then I uh, sometimes in certain hawker stalls, I will feel that. So I do not know uh, maybe certain type of MSG I am uh, allergic to la, or like sensitive towards. Huh? Mark, still the same. You can just spike some MSG into the coffee tomorrow. <laughs> MSG, yeah, in coffee. Uh, <laughs> but she doesn't drink coffee. coffee anyway. Uh, doesn't matter, mm. like, water also can. <laughs> We're not telling her. <laughs> yeah, she should try different yeah. brands. The original Ajinomoto and then the rest. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Mm. So, um... You know, there, there is no no other questions from the audience. Uh, Dr. Lim, do you have any questions? Um, probably a one quick question. Um, when, you when we talk about sugar, right, I believe that in a the household, they will be using a lot of, uh, you know, like brown sugar, gula mm -hmm. um, and also gula uh, nipa, you know, so the you know what are all the traditional uh, a lot lah, a lot. Yeah. So when we come to a chemical formula, it's, it's still back to glucose. So some people will say that those traditional sugars are actually better. So what is your take on this? My take on it, okay. Um, most of the time, if you look at the composition or the the chemical structure of all this sugar or the or the percentage of sucrose, fructose, and also glucose. Most of the time, they are about the same. The only difference is some of these um, brown sugar or palm sugar, they do contain traces of minerals that can be uh, beneficial to our health. Uh, but if you are saying that uh, palm sugar is very good, you can consume it without having to worry about the glucose level or the sucrose level, I think that is that is not correct. Just at the end of the day, they are still sugar. It's just that they do have other type of compound together in the sugar. Minerals is one of them. They could be some other, uh, some other uh, phytochemicals inside, but most of the time will be minerals. And uh, that additional of minerals, is it going to make you more healthy? I think that is um, debatable. And this is actually something similar with those uh, Himalayan salt, pink salt, mountain salt. They are still sodium chloride. So at the end of the day, you are still consuming sodium chloride. Just that you have traces of other mineral inside this Himalayan salt or mountain salt. So it's not like you are taking potassium chloride. It's still sodium chloride. So do not treat this as a miracle solution. It's not going to behave differently in your body it's just that you have the sugar and traces of minerals together um, in, 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 in this type of uh, alternative sweetener but uh, my, my, my suggestion is that if you are a diabetic patient you should avoid this as well if you are really concerned about the sugar intake you should avoid this as well Okay, so yeah, I guess um, that's all the time we have uh, for today. So uh, for those who are watching reruns of this, uh, you can post your questions too, and uh, we will definitely uh, reply to you as well. Uh, so, uh, you know, nothing to be shy about. Um, and uh, in our next session, which is which will be on 3rd of August, it will be on a Thursday instead of our usual Wednesdays. So uh, do take note of that. 
And, um, you know, our usual Wednesday session will resume on the, the 13th of September. So mark your calendars. Uh, our next session is on 3rd of August. So again, uh, if you, the audience, have topics that you feel passionate about and you would like us to talk about it, do let us know. Uh, and uh, we will try our best to, to, to come up with a session for you. Um, also, for those who have not liked or subscribed our uh, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube page, it will really, really help us uh, if you could hit the like button and subscribe button. So uh, on all our pages, uh, it would be really awesome. So thank you. And um, thank you, Dr. Tan Tuan Chiu. Thank you, Dr. Lim. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, and uh, thank you, um, audience, for joining us tonight. And we hope you find this session informative and uh, empowering. So good night, everybody. Take care. Okay. Just to add one more thing, Mark, subscribe and share. Don't just subscribe. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, subscribe. <laughs> I'm not used to doing this, is it? <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.